told me that they had a dreadnought. Sent must have been from there. And I think he was killed here in this tree. For what? How long ago did you lose your son? Did you lose your son? Three years and a half. Three and a half years. That's right. And what was his name? Shukran Asma. Mahmoud. Mahmoud? You know, I, I will show you a picture of David. Yes? <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Anna Maria Tremonti and I am delighted to be able to introduce you to the two women in that film. Robbie Damlin from Israel, Bushra Awad from the West Bank and Manar Faraj who will interpret for Bushra. Welcome, it is really wonderful to be able to talk to you here in Toronto today. Thank you. You have both endured something unimaginable the death of your child. And uh, um, before we talk about your son's death, Robbie, I want you to tell us about David's life. This is always the hardest part. It's so much easier for me to talk about the work and to talk about what my life is like now. But to talk about David, David was kind of my soul child in many ways. And he was part of the peace movement and he was studying for his master's in the philosophy of education. So you don't always know who the person is behind the gun. And um, I think he was so concerned about so many things and he always said, no good. And he always said that, um, that when, when I get old, he will look after me. Tell us the circumstances of David's death. He ran out to protect his colleagues, am I right? Um, David went to serve in the reserves, as always happens in, um, in Israel. You, after your basic prayer service, you have to also go to what's called reserves. And he didn't want to go, but he was in a quandary. You know, he didn't want to serve in the occupied territories. But he said that what would happen to his soldiers because um, he was the officer and what would happen to his students because he was teaching philosophy and if he went, he would treat people with dignity and so would all his soldiers. I told you, you don't know who the person is behind the gun. And then um, they were in a kind of a very deep wadi and a Palestinian sniper shot from above and killed Ten people, and David ran out first in his underpants to try and stop this. And of course, he couldn't because it was like an echo right throughout the whole place. Bushra, I know your son Mahmoud was your firstborn. Can you tell us a little bit about the young man that he was? <laughs>
محمود أنا خلفتها بعد خمس سنين من ما تجوزت. I had him after five years from being pregnant from being married. كان أول فرحة في حياتي. He was the first happiness in my life. مدة الخمس سنين هاي كنت أنا أعاني في مشاكل مع أهل جوزي. During these five years, I had a lot of problems, especially with my husband's family. بس لما شفت محمود فرحت كثير فيه. But when I had محمود, I was so happy. قلت محمود لازم يفرحني في الدنيا أكثر. And I said محمود has to make me happy in this life. محمود كان شمعة في 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 بيتي. محمود was like the light in my house. معطينا الحب والفرح. He gave us love and happiness. كان محمود شاب كثير حلو. He was very handsome man. محمود لو إنه موجود الحين عندك وهانا كثير كثير كان حلو كان كل كهجمت عليه. If محمود was here, all of the women in in this room will fall in love with him. كان مالي علي حياتي كلها وعلى والاخوته يحب حنون كان حنون كثير محمود على اخوته يحبهم. He was very kind man and he loved his siblings. كان حاب يدرس عشان يطلعنا من الوضع اللي احنا كنا فيه. He wanted to study so we won't be poor anymore. كان يحكي لي امي بدي اتعلم علشان انت ترتاحي. He he said, "Mom, I want to get my education so you can relax." Can you say it, Abu, in the job? He always helped him for his father at work. كتيش بدي أحكي عن محمود مش رايح أخلص حكي. Whatever I say about my son Mahmoud, I will never finish. Mahmoud was shot by an Israeli soldier during a protest in the village, in your village, just outside of. Hebron. When Roby, Roby learned about her son's death, she immediately asked that no one be killed in retaliation. But you had a different reaction when Mahmoud was killed. What was your reaction? Got it. Yes. I, okay. We'll, we'll remind people of that. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no worries. All good. I didn't believe that he was killed. I was shocked. It was like the happiness that was taken away from me. I was destroyed. I didn't want to believe that Mahmoud was gone. And how did you feel about Israelis when that happened? أنا كنت لما أشوف أي جندي إسرائيلي أحاول بدي أهجم عليه. When I always saw Israeli soldiers, I want to attack them. أتمنى أعرف الجندي اللي اللي كتل ابنه. I really wanted to know who is the soldier who shot my son. I understand that you had never met an Israeli. You had only seen Israeli soldiers until you met Rabi. And now you work side by side with her. What changed for you so that you could do that? Before I, before I was a member of the parent circle of the bereaved family forum, I didn't want to see any Israeli. She said, they are killers. How can I even talk to them? But after I, I, I started to be a member of that parent circle and I met Ruby, حكينا أنا وياها عن أولادنا. We spoke about our sons. هي بكت. She cried. طلعت إلها إن هي مش إسرائيلية نسيت إنها إسرائيلية. I forgot when she cried that she's an Israeli. هي أم فاقدة. She's a bereaved mother. إن الأم تفقد شعور صعب صعب كثير. 
It's a very difficult feeling to lose your son. After that, I met Israelis and Palestinians mothers who are all bereaved. I really wanted to be with them. So we can change the circle of uh, bereavement. I want to pick up on the idea that when you saw her cry, Robbie, you have said that you cry the same kind of tears. I cried? The same kind of tears. It's just the same color. You know, people don't realize that mothers are really the same all over the world. Um, when I watched the mother in Charlottesville, when she said, you killed my daughter, but you magnified her voice, I was so moved, and, and I met mothers in South Africa and mothers, black mothers, from after the um, Democratic Convention, and we were immediate sisters in pain. It was an extraordinary thing. There's no, um, no barrier, because only a mother who lost a child can actually understand another. It's something that is impossible to understand. And you and Bushra have now dedicated your lives to trying to break down barriers between the two sides where you live. And um, I know that there was a demonstration re recently on International Women's Day where you worked together. Can you tell us a little bit about that demonstration? Actually, we decided this year on the 8th of March to have International Women's Day in the West Bank. And the reason we did that was so that um, the Palestinian women would not have to ask for permits to come to Israel. That's a very undignified thing to do. And after all, freedom of movement is a basic human right. And so 200 women, Palestinian and Israeli, gathered in the West Bank. And we built a wall, and it was 10 meters long. And um, then, having built the wall, we then sprayed all kinds of graffiti, and then we beat it down with great joy, because... <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to the checkpoint, and one of the things that you learn, we went in silence in this march to the checkpoint, and one of the things that you learn in this work is how to talk to people so that you don't close them down. And of course, the minute we got to the checkpoint, so did all the soldiers. And I sent a message to them to say, thank you so much for coming to look after us. And that kind of, <laughs> you learn. But the most moving part of that day was the mother of a young Palestinian boy who was caught by um, Israeli settlers and murdered and burnt while he was still alive which is something that I could never believe would be possible. And that was a reaction to three young Israelis who were kidnapped and killed by the Hamas. And what that is, is the beginning of the cycle of violence. And actually, um, we knew at the parents' circle then that there was going to be a war. And that was the last Gaza war. And we made this clip, which I believe we're going to see at some point, but. What was so interesting about that was that it really proved that we are not waiting for the situation to change us. We have to change the situation regardless of what happens. And today, um, many NGOs are having a big problem with the government in Israel. And um, we continue to work regardless of what happens. We had an extraordinary meeting on Memorial Day this year um, the government, in its wisdom, didn't allow 200 Palestinians to come. You know, they keep saying there's no one to talk to, but here they were. And um, we had another meeting in, uh, in the West Bank as well on the same day, because it's normally only for Israeli soldiers. And more than 5,000 people came, and actually there were a lot of demonstrations against us. You get used to that. They threw bags, plastic bags of urine at us and spat at us. Can you imagine? Well, but nevertheless, we did it, and it was the most incredible evening. And you have tried to.
and you have tried to reach out through video, and I would like to show that video. It's simple, it's a powerful message that the Parents Circle produced uh, for both Israeli and Palestinian parents. Here it is. Bushra, when you see that video today, does it move you still? Of course. I don't want any mother to lose her son. The bereavement is very hard. I hope no mother will ever lose a child. This video really touches me. I really want the whole world to see this video. You both work together. Not everyone in the West Bank or Gaza or in Israel want that to happen. And I'm, I'm, I know initially, Bushra, your family didn't want to join you in the work you were doing. Have they come around? My family really didn't want to. My family didn't approve first, especially my sons. Sayyid, my son. He always argued with me and fought me for being a member of the parents circle. I kept talking with him. He always went to demonstrations. I always went after him. He didn't even reply. He always went to demonstrations. So I decided to go with him and carry stones just like him. I told him, if you go, I'll go. If you don't go, I won't go. We live together or die together. Why would I live without you? If you throw a stone, you might be killed like Mahmoud, your brother. So why? So if you die, I'll die. You and your whole family have come so far. You, I understand you were 14 when you got married. You lived in one place. Now you're traveling the world with Robbie and you're talking to people in cities around the world. How, how do you feel about that? What do you think about with how so many things have changed for you now? I started to be a member of the parents circle as a member of the women committee. I went to give lectures for in Israel. I even gave lectures to uh, women who will attend the, uh, the army in Israel. Before the army. I, I always face many difficult uh, questions in these lectures. One of these questions is like, why would your son uh, uh, throw a stone as a, at uh, the soldier? They compare a stone with a bullet. 
The stone will, is never compared with the bullet. My son threw a stone, but I should have never, ever uh, lose him. بعض هذه المحاضرات أنا كمان في 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 للعرب الفلسطينية. I give lectures to Palestinians as well. برضه بتعرض لأسئلة كثير صعبة. And I always face hard and difficult questions. قولي إن أنا بعد دم ابني. They even tell me that I sold my son's blood. أنا ما ببيع دم ابني. I never sell my son's blood. أنا بشتري في دم أولاد الثانيين. I buy the blood of my other children. احنا عبد كمان نشتغل في لجنه التطريز لجنه معرفه التطريز. We also have an embroidery project with the women. مجموعه نساء بيشتغلوا على البواك. A women آه. committee <laughs> do the shoes that Ruby is actually wearing. Well, we didn't wear it because we lost our packages. So. <laughs> Robbie, show us those shoes. shoes. You've got something um, on the side. These uh, shoes that I'm wearing. Uh, have a bird on it's uh, a project that we did which is called taking steps in the path for peace and we actually launched it in the european parliament and then in the bundestag and then in congress and we managed to get both sides of the house to come to this but it was a way also for us to increment the income of palestinian women who make a lot of embroidery but they don't have the, enough money to buy good thread so this is part of the work that we do, which is really to create projects which not only help, but also bring attention, like a cartoon exhibition, like an exhibition of plates, all kinds of ideas. We have many films. We are a small group, but we make a lot of noise. We're more than 600 families. But I think that this message is so unique. And if I can say one thing about today, this is not a message just for Israel and Palestine. This is a message that the world can learn from. Because if we can sit together, having paid the highest price in this conflict and talking the same voice, then surely that should be an example for others. And if I can say one other thing, I'm, it's hard to keep me quiet. Um, and, and that thing is that please, we ask you not to take sides. Don't be pro-Israel, don't be pro-Palestine. Be part of the solution because what you are doing by being pro one or the other is importing our conflict into your country and creating hatred between Jews and Muslims. I don't think that's what you want. Before we finish up, I just want to tell our audience, uh, you two travel the world together and you work together, but I see you kibitzing backstage. You really care about each other. So very briefly, what can we learn from your friendship? That it's possible. You know, I mean, this is not just a, a alone case in the parent circle you should come to the meetings and to recognize how extraordinary it is to see that we have recognized the humanity of the other. And the minute that that happens, it's the beginning of the end of conflict. And the problem with Israel and Palestine is it's so cut off one from the other that this cut off creates fear, which creates hatred, which creates violence. And so whatever we can do to bring people to understand and we run many projects. We have a parallel narrative project, which is extraordinary. It was also created with the help of Georgetown. We have to leave it there. It's really wonderful to meet the two of you and see you together. Bushra Awad, Roby Damlin, and Manar Faraj, thank you so much. Thank you for your inspiration.